Space junk from a Russian anti-satellite weapons test is threatening seven astronauts aboard the International Space Station. The US Space Command is tracking a field of orbiting debris resulting from an apparent satellite breakup. The debris has come uncomfortably close to the space station on subsequent orbits. The US State Department has called the test dangerous and irresponsible. Earlier today, the Russian Federation recklessly conducted a destructive satellite test of a direct ascent anti-satellite missile against one of its own satellites. The test has so far generated over 1,500 pieces of tra trackable orbitable debris and hundreds of thousands of pieces of smaller orbitable, orbital debris that now threaten the interests of all nations. In addition, this test will significantly increase the risk to astronauts and cosmonauts on the International Space Station, as well as to other human spaceflight activities. Russia's dangerous and irresponsible behavior jeopardizes the long-term sustainability of our outer space and clearly demonstrates that Russia's claims of opposing the weaponization of space are disingenuous and hypocritical. The United States will work with our allies and partners to respond. To discuss this story further, I'm joined now by Associate Professor Alice Gorman, a space archaeologist at Flinders University. Hello and welcome to you. Firstly, how would the seven astronauts aboard the International Space Station likely have become aware of this incident? Well, they were contacted by their flight controllers about 4 a.m. this morning, their time, and had to scramble to take refuge in the two crew vehicles that are currently docked at the space station. And the space station will be passing through this debris cloud approximately every 90 minutes. So that threat isn't going away quickly. How long is the threat to them likely to continue for? Does anybody know? I haven't seen any modelling of that at this stage, but some of the debris will likely start to re-enter the atmosphere fairly soon. However, it, the satellite that was destroyed was literally in orbit just above the space station, and it will take quite a while for that debris to re-enter. Some earlier anti-satellite tests, the debris is still around after 15 years. So it's going to be a constant worry, I think, for crew aboard the ISS. OK, so is it only going to impact them if there is a direct strike or is the fact that it's just orbiting and could potentially pass nearby the International Space Station be a concern? Well, fortunately, a large piece of debris hasn't ever struck the space station, but probably a few times a year they get an alert that something is drawing quite close and every time that happens they have to take measures to protect themselves. So the fact that they're now in the middle of this debris cloud, which is more or less at the same orbital height that the station is orbiting, uh, suggests that they're going to get alerts like this a lot more frequently over the next several years. And presumably this is going to have an impact on the work they're doing on the ISS right now. Well, the schedules are very packed. They have everything worked out in five minute increments. So to interrupt the important scientific work that they're doing to go and have to, to go into the, the crew vessels and wait for the debris threat to pass every 90 minutes, you know, obviously that's going to inter interrupt a lot of that work significantly. The US State Department says Russia carried out this anti-satellite test. Is there any doubt that that is indeed what happened and what are the wider repercussions of the action? There was some discussion when the first debris was notified that it could have been an accidental breakup or from something else, but there's no doubt now it was the Russian anti-satellite test. And the international space community, I think, is in shock today. We have an emerging critical orbital debris situation that has the potential to stop us from using Earth orbit for services like Earth observation, weather prediction, telecommunications. The debris is also in the general kind of region of the orbit of the Starlink mega constellation and other mega constellations that are being launched. And it's potentially going to radically increase the amount of debris as this debris collides with other debris that is already up there. So it, the irresponsibility of this action is, is, is impossible to underestimate. And the fact that we've already been dealing this with previous anti-satellite anti tests, we know the results. So Russia knew exactly what it was doing with this test. 
it, uh, it, it beggars belief. So do you think the international community is going to address this in the future and how can it? This is the tricky part, I guess. So everybody agrees that we don't want to create any more debris and that anti-satellite tests are bad for that reason alone. But this is also an action which is demonstrating military force in space. And the weaponization of space, potential war in space in future, is also a big topic of discussion in the international space community. And one does have to question Russia's motives in performing this test right now when the subject of the sustainable and peaceful use of space has never been more important. Associate Professor Alice Gorman, space archaeologist at Flinders University. Fascinating to talk to you about this. Thank you. No worries.